Okay, good morning from Anderson Forge, um, about a week or so before Thanksgiving 2016. Um, what I'm going to do here is just, uh, I'm, I'm doing this to help out a couple customers of mine, um, and maybe, who knows, just people in general who might have a little confusion on what Damascus steel is. Um, I know that some people, when we just mention, words are used sometimes in conjunction with Damascus, and we say we etch our Damascus and it's welded, and they confuse those terms with possibly thinking that the design in the steel that they see is something we etched like with a paintbrush you know we etched that pattern in there and that is a huge confusion that I run up against a lot and another one is like when we say we weld Damascus they see you know somebody with welder goggles on and and um, welding rod and stuff like that and it's a different kind of welding so I'm just gonna hit some highlights of what Damascus is and maybe it'll clear some things up for some people. I'll put it on my YouTube channel, stick it on my Facebook page, on my website, etc. Maybe others can benefit from it. Um, the designs that you see in a Damascus blade, and I'll stick a couple pictures up right here, are literally within the steel. They are within that piece of steel making up that blade. It's not a design that's created on the surface. It's throughout from one side to the other of that blade steel. And it comes from using two different steels. And I keep just um, aiming at this little block of Damascus here that I'm about to, I'm gonna weld it up. I'm going to put it in a 2,300 degree propane forge. It's going to get real hot and I'm going to stick it under a power hammer and a hydraulic press and all, those, all these layers of steel that you see here are going to become one piece of steel. They're all going to bond metallically. And here are um, these pieces of steel individually that are in this, it's called a billet. This is about an eighth of an inch thick. This piece of steel here is about an eighth of an inch thick. And this one is about three eighths of an inch thick. And they're stacked up into a stack of repeating layers, a little bit of one, a little bit of the other. So that there's six layers each. Now I'm gonna take this billet of steel, now come with me, I'm going to put them in this 2,300 degree forge and when they come up to see how bright that forge is when those pieces of steel get that hot they're going to come out and I'm going to use I'm going to use this power hammer that you see here and I'm going to use this 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 hydraulic press that you see here and those pieces of steel are going to get welded into they, they get welded because of they're so hot they actually those layers become one layer with with repeating properties as you go through it um, there's this these two pieces of steel are basically the same kind of steel which which means you know for the biggest part almost all steel is about 90 percent iron the, the iron that's in one of these layers is the same as the iron that's in the other layers. This one that is thinner has a little bit of nickel. All steel has different kinds of alloys like nickel and chromium and vanadium and manganese and so on that gives the steel different properties. But it, 
all steel is majorly iron. Now, I'm going to take this block of steel, and once it gets welded, I'm going to use that power hammer and that press, and I'm going to squish it down. I'm going to make it thinner. And, it, and when it gets thinner, I'm going to make it longer. And once it's about two feet long, and only about as thick as one of those thick pieces of steel there, I'm going to cut it into three pieces, restack it upon itself, and then I'll have 36 layers. And I go through that whole process again. I go into that forge, I get it hot, I weld it, I smash them and bang them and squeeze them. They become one layer of steel. I draw them out again like rolling out a glob of Play-Doh on your kitchen counter with a rolling pin. You roll it out, it becomes thinner, it becomes longer, cut it into pieces, restack it upon itself, and then if I did it, cut that 36 layers into three pieces and stacked them upon itself, I'd have 108 layers. Weld that, draw that out, restack it again, three pieces, I have 324 layers. And then I have this bar of steel that I manipulate and I twist it, I bend it, I cut it, I groove it, I flip it, I flap it, and on and on and on. Just giving you an idea, it's a lot of hard work, it's hot and it's nasty. Now, when it's all said and done, depending on how I cut it, how I grooved it, how I twisted it, how I flipped it, how I flopped it, and so on, I'm imagine taking a stack of two different colors of Play-Doh and, and twisting them and moving them around. You would create these patterns of two different colors in, in the end, and then you roll it out into a flat piece and you'd have cool designs. Well, that's what we're doing with what we call Damascus steel. We're welding it up and we're creating patterns. It is a pattern welded steel. Now, when it's all said and done, it just looks like a normal shiny knife. But what happens is we take that finished blade of steel and we put it into a vat of acid. This is where we talk about etching. And when we it, the acid eats eats away. We use an acid that is designed to eat into the steel. But that one piece of steel, the thin, the thin bar of steel that is 3% nickel, has just enough nickel in it that it resists the acid and it is not affected by the acid. It only eats away at the other one and that reveals the pattern we have created in our steel. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this this billet of steel into my forge, start getting it hot, and then I'll show you um, what happens when we weld together. We forge weld our first layer of steel, our first um, weld of steel. Okay, that was a lot of talking, seven minutes there. I'll, but and that's just the key points and, and so forth. So hang on, we'll be back. Okay, our billet is now in the forge, um, coming up to the temperature of that forge. You see how bright and yellow that forge is? I don't even know if you can see the billet in there, but I literally need that, that, uh, concoction of steel there to come up as hot as you can see in that forge. It's well over 2,000 degrees. Okay. Um, right here off to my left is my forge with the steel in it. Over there is my power hammer. I'm going to come out of this forge with that bill of steel and go into that power hammer. Now, those two big sheets of steel you see on either side of the power hammer are shields that are going to um, stop the molten flux that's all over the billet from squirting all around the room and see I've got a drop cloth there over the door it's not this is a brand new shop and I don't have a door in the in my finish room yet because quite honestly I don't need it but when winter gets here I'm gonna have to put a door in there for heat but anyway um, those big plates of steel there keep the flux from squirting all over the room. So hang on here shortly and you should be able to see me get over there and, and weld this billet up for the very first weld. Which is the most important weld of all because when you consider there's you know 
actually there's 12, there's 18 pieces of steel in there. That's a lot of surface area that needs to get welded, so it's very, very important. Because we are just about to have iron hole. Okay, now I'm going. You're going to see me. Just um, I've been working on this a little bit. I had some. I had some visitors show up, so now I've got uh, press running, and I'm uh, just doing some reduction until we get down to where I can cut, restack, and reweld. So hang, hang tight. I'm going to be over there in a second. everything um, that I'm doing right now is, is really not all that significant but all I'm trying to do is just increase my layer count so um, remember we started with 12 I'm going to draw this out a little bit more cut it into three restack it reweld it draw it out cut it into three restack it draw it out be 12 then we'll have 36 108 and for a single twist I might just double that last one and go to 216 layers I'm, I don't really know yet. Um, depends on how I feel. But anyway, I will do another draw here right now.
Okay, well here we are, and um, this is the 324 billet that I just welded up, and it's uh, basically forged into um, about an inch and an eighth round, or actually octagon. It's it's got eight sides to it, um, and those points will come into play in the twist to give it a little character. I'm showing it in the light right now because I'm going to swing the camera over and it's going to get kind of dark until that thing, just bear with me. So right here, it's you'll see it's a little, sorry, it's, um, we're on the dark side of the moon here now, but when that when that billet comes out of the forge, of course, it's going to be 2,000 degrees, you know. And what I'm going to do is, and you may see it right off to the side, um, I'm going to put this in the forge. You're going to bring it up to welding heat. And where we're at right now is uh, in, a, in a rigid pipe threader, and I have eight-point impact sockets on either end. And um, I've forge the ends of this bar square and those sockets are one inch so that'll give you an idea how how big around the bar is um, and I will twist this thing probably 14 or 15 times so we'll be back here in a little bit okay what I forgot to mention was when I when I come out of that forge um, right over there by that welder, I'm going to have a quench tank, and maybe, maybe over there in front of the press, which will just be able to see a little bit. And I'm going to have a quench tank, and I'm going to quench the ends to get them cooler and sort of um, cool off and harden the corners of those square ends so that they don't deform while I'm twisting. So the first thing you're going to see me do is to quench the ends, put these sockets on, stick it in here, and I have a foot switch on the floor. Um, this thing's already hot and ready to go, so all I gotta do is step on that switch and twist this single twist Damascus. steel has expanded with heat. Right. Yeah, I mean, I knew that was, was going to happen. Okay, we're all right. I'm okay. GoPro was going. Uh, All right. That should be the twist. And these ends right here are going to end up being the tang of a knife. I'll use those. They'll be in the handle. Right. So I don't waste that. Then there'll be another one in the middle. Another knife. I got to get three hunting knives out of this somehow. Anyway, that's it. That's twist. That's single twist Damascus. Easy peasy. Uh, 
seven sixteenths of an inch thick, 450,000 thick, an inch and five eighths wide. Um, so this got to come down to a quarter inch or you know two hundred seventy thousandths when I forge my knife. So there's still a lot of steel here, and I'll get all the knives I need out here. 